The Harold Perry Show, brought to you by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. That's right. Tension. <laughs> we all like to know what the future holds in store for us. Sure we do. And that's why you'll like the United States Army if you're a young man or a young woman with an eye on the future. That's especially true if you want to get the valuable technical training and experience your fast-growing army can offer you. It's a varied army, one that needs all kinds of technical skills, skills possessed by men and women who can think fast and think efficiently. The United States Army today is one of the world's greatest technical training schools. Every man is a specialist a master at his job. And the army sees to it that every man is trained to do his job right. In such a fast-growing army, there's plenty of room for advancement. Learn your job well and you advance to a better job. Get all the facts about today's army. Men and women volunteers are now being accepted. If you're between the ages of 18 and 34, stop in at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and ask about your place in the United States Army. And now, Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, let's see what's going on in the little town of Melrose Springs. There's been a big change in the life of Honest Harold, the town's popular radio crooner. His romantic interest, Theodora, has left town for an indefinite visit to New York. This is Harold's first evening as an unattached young man about town. We find him home in the living room, sitting in his leatherette easy chair, thinking about life. Uh, so my little dancing teacher's gone away. We had fun together. Nothing serious, but we did have a lot of laughs. I'll kind of miss her, though. Well, better get back to my reading. Hmm, haven't looked through this little old date book for quite a while. Let's see here. Maisie Parchman. No, she's out. She got married and settled down on a mink farm. <laughs> uh, looky here, Flora Bell Breckenridge, my old high school sweetheart. Ah, uh, she was wonderful. Wonder if she's still engaged to that big grain merchant over in Charlieville. Probably not. She's pretty flighty. Sure would be nice to see her again, though. We could go to a movie like we used to and take a ride, park up at... <laughs> uh, say, maybe I ought to call her. Oh, it's... Harold. Yes, Mother? Look at this article in the evening paper. Hmm? It's about your old sweetheart, Flora Bell Breckenridge. Flora Bell? Just thinking about her. Yes. She's going to get married. Oh. Here's the article right here. Let's see, Mother. Your society editor's spy in Charlieville tells him that the lovely Flora Bell Breckenridge will soon be middle-isling it with Willis Sider, prominent feed and grain man. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, so little Flora Bell is finally getting married. Yeah. I remember when you two were pretty sweet on each other in high school. Oh, we conjugated a few verbs together, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose her wedding makes you feel a little Sad? Sad? Not at all, Mother. Doesn't mean a thing to me. I'm just a happy bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I thought maybe with Theodora gone and Floribel going... You... Yeah, don't worry about me, Mother. I'll have a wonderful time. I can relax at home nights or go out with the boys. There's old Doc Yak Yak, Pete the Marshal. I'm glad you feel that way, Harold. I was afraid it might bother you. Your girls leaving you one by one. No, what the heck? Who needs women... Let him go, Mother. <laughs> it's just like that old song, Harold. Mm -hmm. Two by two, they go marching through. What? Sweethearts on parade. Mother. You can say farewell to your Flora Bell. Zeke. Sweethearts on parade. I feel blue, Mother. Toodaloo. I think I'll take a walk. <laughs> Doctor, just thought I'd come over and spend an evening with my old friend. <laughs> oh, I guess you're kind of on the loose now. 
Theodora's gone, and your old sweetheart Florabelle's getting married, I see. Yeah, but who cares? It's more fun being a bachelor anyway. Well, what'll we do tonight, Doc? Oh, we'll have a real exciting evening. We'll play checkers. Checkers? Oh, good. <laughs> I got the board right here. Yeah, here we are, Harold. You take the red, and I'll take the black. Yeah, all right. Yes, sir, we'll have more fun than a bear. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. What's that goat doing in here, Doc? Oh, Arthur loves to watch checker games. Don't you, Arthur? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to watch him, though. He likes to eat your kings. <laughs> uh, all right, Doc. Let's get started. <clears throat> you move first, Harry. Okay. Well, let's see. I think I'll move this one over here. No. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, does that goat have to breathe down my neck while I play? Stop kibitching, Arthur. Oh, come on, Harry. Now, I've moved. All right. Let's see. I think I'll move this one right bah, here. Bah, bah. <laughs> <laughs> Heaven's sake, will you please mind your own business, Arthur? You better listen to him, Harold. He knows the right moves. He just seems to smell them. He certainly does. <laughs> Not so close, Arthur. <laughs> Your move again, Harry. Well, this time I'm going to move this man bah, over... Bah, bah. I don't care what you say, Arthur. There. <laughs> you asked for it, Harold. Now watch this. Oop, oop, oop. A triple jump. <laughs> I warned you, Harold. You should have listened to Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, if Arthur's so smart, why don't you play checkers with him? Oh, that's no fun, Harold. He always beats me. <laughs> oh, goodbye. <laughs> yourself. Doc and that goat playing checkers. I'm glad I didn't stay there. Might have had to play the winner. Well, I think I'll see what Pete the Marshal's doing tonight. Hello, Pete, old pal. Howdy, Harold. Pete? How about us two happy bachelors spending the evening together? Oh, I'm sorry, but I just can't tonight, Harold. Oh, why not? Well, I'm in love, boy. (laughs) (laughs) Pete, when did this happen? 2 p.m. yesterday afternoon. That's when I met Eloise Zeigenfuss. Oh, my goodness. It all began when I gave her a traffic ticket. Ticket? Oh, for heaven's sake. I declare love's doing funny things to me, Harold. This afternoon, I could hear bells ringing. Well, so could I. There was a fire at the lumberyard. <laughs> See? There they go again. That's the telephone. Oh, <laughs> excuse me, boy. Uh. Melrose Springs Police Station, Pete the Marshal speaking. Well, well, oh, hello, Eloise. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> it's Miss Zeigenfuss here. You certainly could have fooled me. <laughs> What's that, Eloise? <laughs> oh, sure you didn't. Here, Eloise put that traffic ticket I gave her under her pillow last night. Ain't that sweet? Very sweet. <laughs> <laughs> what should we do tonight, Eloise? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Go to a movie. <laughs> and, and then have a soda. Then what? Oh, well, we. <laughs> Harold, you know what she wants to do after the movie? No, what? Go to her house and make raspberry jello. <laughs> Isn't that a doozy? It certainly is. Good night. <laughs> Good morning, Station Case JP. I'll connect you. Uh, good morning, Glory. Oh, good morning, Harold. How are you? But, what? You must feel kind of sad with your old sweetheart, Flora Bell, getting married. Sad? I do not. Why, it doesn't mean a thing to me. Oh, I thought you two used to be real sweet on each other. Well, we were in a way, Gloria. 
We were ready to make a down payment on a ring once. <laughs> Flora Bell changed her mind, decided she'd rather have a mahjong set. <laughs> yeah, but that's all over, Gloria. Flora Bell is just a memory to me. Something in the past that'll never come back. Like ground round steak at 39 cents a pound. <laughs> I'm glad that you're not unhappy about her wedding, Harold Unhappy? Poo Doesn't bother me a bit Oh, I forgot There's a letter here for you A letter? Let me see it, Gloria uh, Probably from one of my fans Wants me to Zoof It's from Flora Bell What? She's coming in on the bus from Charlieville She wants me to meet her She does? Yes She must have broken her engagement See you later, Gloria I'm going down to the bus station to meet Charlie Bell I mean, Flora Bell uh, Charlie Bell Oh, goodbye <laughs> Bell's bus will be in any minute. Guess she's got to thinking about me again. Just couldn't go through with her engagement. Old irresistible Harold, that's me. Well, I'll just play a little hard to get. Kind of keep her guessing. <laughs> oh, there's the bus. A lot of people getting off. I wonder oh, what. <sighs> there she is. Don't forget, Harold, be nonchalant. Wish I had a muir ad. <laughs> You sweet little buttercup. Ah. <laughs> Hello, Flora Bell. Fancy meeting you here. Well, Harold, didn't you get my letter? Letter? Oh, yes, yes, I believe I did. Did you have a pleasant trip? Oh, aren't you just a teensy weensy bit glad to see your Flora Bell? Good for him, Harold. Well, Flora Bell, it's always nice to see an old friend. Old friend? Silly boy. Harold. Yeah? I'm so glad to see you. Ooh, ah. Uh. <laughs> Are you glad to see me? Eef, what the heck? Guess I've held out long enough. I give in. Kiss me, Flora Bell. Harold, aren't you ashamed trying to kiss a woman who's about to be married? Huh? You're still going to get married? Why, of course. I just came here to shop for my trousseau. Your hoosel? <laughs> but just because we're not sweethearts anymore, that doesn't mean we can't see each other. Oh? After all, we are adults. We are? Oh, sure. <laughs> I know. We can be brother and sister. Won't that be nice? Oh, swell. And Harold, what do a brother and sister do when they meet after a long time? Shake hands. <laughs> no, they kiss. They do? Why, of course, silly. It's all in the family. But... Here's a little old kiss from your little old sister for her little old brother. Mm. He, old brother. <laughs> Return for the second act of our story, Honest Harold, in just a moment. Your United States Army needs men. Men capable of doing a man's job in a great outfit. Men who take a special pride in being a part of a man's army. If you're a veteran, your skills are needed now in your growing United States Army. If you're a high school graduate, you can join now. And after basic training, apply for assignment to an Army school for the finest technical training. If you qualify for the school you select and come within the quota, you'll be assigned to it. However you choose to serve, it's service that means a special pride. The sense of a job well done in a man's army. The knowledge that you're one of the best. Young men between the ages of 18 and 34, men who look to the future, are now choosing the United States Army. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station now and grow with the world's greatest army and the opportunities it offers you. And now back to Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, Honest Harold's old sweetheart, Flora Bell Breckenridge, has come back into his life, but only temporarily for she's still engaged to her grain merchant in Charlieville. 
Flora Bell and Harold have decided that they'll maintain a brother and sister relationship while she's in Melrose Springs. Yeah. It's afternoon now, and we find Brother Harold walking home from the radio station. Uh, didn't get much work done this afternoon. Kept thinking about Sister Flora Bell. This is ridiculous. I'll just put her out of my mind, that's all. I'll think of something horrible. My paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Harry. Oh, hello, Doc. Howdy, boy. Pete, how are you today? Brother. <laughs> yeah, you sure got a cute sister, Harold. <laughs> Things certainly get around in this town. Look here, fellas. Flora Bell just came over here to find her trousseau. Where'd she lose it? <laughs> this is no time for jokes, Doc, and believe me, that wasn't one. Now, I'd like to remind you both that Flora Bell is engaged to be married. Oh, she's been engaged before, Harold. She sure has. That's how they formed the Moose Lodge here. <laughs> Ten fellas got together with a common interest. They'd all been engaged to Florabelle. <laughs> you needn't explain it. Very funny. Just a friendly warning, though, Harold. I'll tell you, I'd watch my step. Fellas, I appreciate your concern, but you don't have to worry about me. It's all over between Florabelle and me. She's just an old flame. Yeah, but all it takes to rekindle an old flame is a little sparking. <laughs> Say, Doc, that was a doozy. Why, thank you, Pete. He gods Abbott and Costello. <laughs> well, all I can say is, Harold, when you see Florabelle, beware. Yes, sir. Well, Pete's right, Harold. Yes, sir, just beware. Okay, Pete. Beware, boy. Hey, where are you off to? I'm going to beware. You'll never find me. <laughs> Uh, hope Mother's got dinner ready. That Pete and his beware. Nothing to worry about. Maybe I hadn't be better see Flora Bell too much, though. Maybe I won't call her tonight. I'll just stay home. Hello, Tootsie Roll. Oop! Flora Bell, what are you doing here? Well, I dropped over to talk about my trousseau with your mother. Just thought I'd wait until you got home to say hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> Glad Mother's home. And how's my big brother, hmm? Oh, fine. Glad to see your little sister. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Mother. Hello, <laughs> Harold. Flora Bell and I had such a nice visit this afternoon. That's good, Mother. Well, Flora Bell, it's been nice seeing you. Here's your purse. Drop in again sometime. Well, Harold, Flora Bell is staying for dinner. Oh? Well, we'll just have a jolly little dinner then, the three of us. <laughs> the two of us, Harold. The two of us? Yes, son. I'm going to the ladies' aid supper. What? And Flora Bell offered to stay so you wouldn't be lonesome. Now, wasn't that sweet of her? But mother, why don't you stay too? Oh, I have to go to the ladies' aid supper, Harold. I'm chairman of the potato salad committee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but... but uh... Here we are, Harold. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't this nice, you and I being here all alone? Uh-huh. Well, shall we have dinner? Well, it isn't quite ready. Oh. I think I'll go upstairs and clean my BB gun. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Harold, can't we have a little talk? Talk? Well, you're my big brother, and I'd like to discuss my fiancé, Willis, with you. Willis? Oh, all right. Just think, before long, Willis and I will be married. Yeah, keep that in mind, sister. Oh, Harold, <laughs> when I cook that first dinner for my hubby, I just know I'm going to be so nervous. I I'll probably do everything all wrong. Well, he'll probably have a good Not stomach. Not if I just had a little practice. Huh? Harold, I just got an idea. Oh, what's that? Why don't you be Willis? Huh? We'll play like we're married, and I'm cooking our first dinner at home. Oh, beware. We'll act the whole thing out. Now, you've just come home from work. You come in the door. But... Willis, darling, you come home to your little wife. I have. <laughs> I'm going to give you a great big hug. Mm. <laughs> Ooh. Hold it. Willis is coming in again. <laughs> now, supper's almost ready. Uh, you just sit down in your easy chair, Willis. All right. 
You just lean back and I'll sit on the arm of your chair here. Now, let me run my cool hand across your tired brow. Zonk. <laughs> I could grow into this part. Do that again, Flora Bell. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Hank. Oop. Howdy, boy. Hello, fellas. <laughs> yeah, you sure look cozy. <laughs> You sure do, brother. <laughs> oh, he's not my brother anymore. He's my husband. <laughs> what? You sure work fast, boy. Don't you think we make cute newlyweds? Harold, I told you to be where. Yeah, but I didn't expect you to be here. <laughs> now, look, fellas, Flora Bell and I were just pretending we were married. Yes, yes. And I was just going to serve hubby his dinner. Yeah, well, in that case, we'll be running along. Good. Oh, now, now, Joe. Just a minute, gentlemen. Uh, won't you stay for dinner, too? Zoop. Why, thank you. We'd be glad to. But, Floribel, um, we've only got three chops. Oh, now, let me pie. Oh, three chops, that's enough for us. But, yeah, you can live on love, Lammy Pie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lammy Pie to you. <laughs> I'm home. Oh, hello, Mother. Oh, I had a wonderful time at the ladies' aid. How was your dinner with Floribel? Must have been a pleasant little twosome. Well, it was a twosome till Doc and Pete came. Then it was gruesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, were they here, too? They sure were. They played Parcheesi with Floribel while I did the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was awfully sweet of Flora Bell to visit this before she got married. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mother, I've been thinking it over, and I don't think I should see Flora Bell again. You don't? No. I was pretty sweet on her once, and since she's engaged now, I, I don't want to start thinking about her that way again. Oh. Well, I understand, son, and maybe you're right. Good night, Harold. Good night, Mother. Now, don't stay up too late. Okay. Uh, this is the best way, all right. Sure. Out of sight, out of mind. Oop. There's the phone. Floor bell. Well, I'll just say I can't see her. I'll be polite but firm. Hi, right, George, I've made up my mind, and nothing is going to change it. Hello? Hello, Harold. Floor bell? I've decided that we Harold, I'm calling to say goodbye. Uh, goodbye? I've decided to go home on the 11 o'clock bus tonight, so I guess we won't see each other again. No, I guess not. Uh... That is, unless you want to drive me to the bus station and tell me goodbye. Flora Bell, I don't think... I made my mind up. When I say no, it means... Yes. I'll... <laughs> uh, I'll pick you up in five minutes. <laughs> Well, here we are, Flora Bell. Yes. <sighs> I hope you didn't mind coming up here to Lover's Point just once more before I leave. No, of course not. Mm. Oh, Harold, remember when we used to come up here after the high school dances? Yeah. We'd sit here close together and watch the twinkling lights down below. Mm-hmm. That light on the left is the bus station. Don't you think we'd better get down there? Oh, we've got lots of time. Uh -huh. Let's turn on the radio like we used to. All right. Isn't that beautiful? <sighs> Harold? Yeah? about singing for me just once more so I can carry the memory home on the bus. On the bus? Well, all right. Oh, speak to me of love 
And say what I'm longing to hear Tender words of love Repeat them again I implore you Oh, speak to me of love And whisper these words to me, dear I adore you Ah, oh, that was thrilling Thanks Well, shall we be going? Aren't you going to kiss me goodbye? Well, I don't think I should, Florabelle. After all, you're engaged. Wouldn't be fair to Willis. But I'm not engaged. Huh? Willis called me this evening. He'd heard about me seeing you when he started laying down the law. What? So I told him if he was going to be unreasonably jealous, our engagement was off. You did? Mm -hmm. Well, but I thought you were taking the bus back to Charlieville. Well, I was, but I won't if you want me to stay, Tootsie Roll. Do I? Pucker up, Florabelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, by the way, Harold, uh -huh. don't you worry about Willis. Yeah, why? Why, that big old meanie said he was coming right over here and break you in two. Zoink. Harold. Huh? I'm Pucker. I'm tuckered. Let's go home. Here's some news for high school graduates, especially the young men and women who are graduating this year. Let's talk about the United States Army's fine technical schools available to recruits in these times. Your United States Army today is a highly specialized team dependent on many technical skills. The opportunities are unlimited for young men and women who can think and act. Men and women who can be trained to support, maintain, and supply. Yes, your Army needs specialists in radar, radio, diesel electric equipment, automotive maintenance, photography, and many other essential skills. As an Army enlistee, you may be selected for one of the many kinds of technical training given in the finest schools available. And if you can qualify, you will be ready for the kind of technical schooling that makes the United States Army the best-trained army in the world. Your army is constantly looking for men who can handle man-sized jobs. And for women, too, for the Women's Army Corps. Drop in at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station tomorrow and get the interesting details. Be sure to listen next week to the Harold Perry Show, Honest Harold, when Harold meets his jealous rival, Willis. <laughs> the supporting players tonight included Jane Morgan, Parley Bear, Shirley Mitchell, and David Light. Who did the goat? And featured Gloria Holiday as Gloria and Joseph Kearns as old Doc Yak Yak. And what a character. Norman MacDonald directed, and the music was composed and conducted by Jack Meekin. Yasha. Honest Herald, created by Harold Perry, was written by Gene Stone, Jack Robinson, and Dick Powell. Fine fellas. The Harold Perry Show has been brought to you by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Visit your nearest recruiting station tomorrow. Bob Lamont speaking. Good night, Bob. Good night, Hal. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.